let's go across the channel to the French because um, that was, I mean, I, had, I knew about Liverpool, I knew about Bristol, but France, I wasn't much aware of. So that was really mm -hmm. fascinating too, to kind of get a little bit of the French perspective. And you have uh, Nantes and Bordeaux as the two locations where museums did embrace. And you, you had like, I think one or two pictures from the inside and it looked like these, um, the displays, the ex exhibits were um, very modern looking, very mm -hmm. kind of um, innovative in their design. So mm -hmm. in part, I'm kind of like curious if you could talk a little bit about, first of all, the story, but also kind of the way it is displayed um, in these museums with regard to slavery and the slave trade. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Um, if we start with Nantes, that is uh, perhaps the city that it was the largest um, uh, slave trading port in France. Nantes uh, really has been engaging in this debate since the 1990s, again, academics, black citizens, and so on. Uh, and there is this uh, castle uh, that uh, is a Nantes history museum, and this uh, is a huge, imposing uh, building uh, then, uh, that has been there then, of course, uh, for, uh, for centuries. And this is the Nantes history museum that gathers the collections of previous museums also that um, that now uh, don't exist anymore and uh, that museum th that was involved in debates associated with the Atlantic slave trade since the 1990s when they held uh, an exhibition that was called the uh, shackles uh, of memory um, uh, les anneaux de la memoire and uh, then the, the museum started and uh, revising the the exhibitions and they chose an interesting approach which is uh, having then uh, then the the, the the exhibition follows the, the museum follows chronological order then uh, the the history of the the city um and we, uh, uh, until the, the, the moment that arrives then uh, at the, the 18th century when the city um, is engaging then fully in the Atlantic slave trade, then it's much associated with the maritime history of the city. But uh, of course they have restrictions because we have the castle, then we have to, to they organize the exhibitions by following the rules that they had. In many of the rooms where they are associated with the Atlantic slave trade, they have this sort of look inside the, with uh, wooden walls that uh, evoke the, the slave ship. Uh, but they did an interesting job because they have all these collections that belonged to slave merchants in the city. Then we have this. Uh, luxurious uh, objects, uh, then a lot of silver, a lot of uh, china, mm. uh, tapestries, artworks, and also maps and documents and all these things because they have an interesting collection of documents as well. And it started adding also artworks because they have temporary exhibitions in a, in a, a separate, um, separate building. And when they have those, um, uh, those exhibitions, they introduce uh, artworks, uh, then sometimes smaller versions of those artworks to interact with the old mm. objects. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's, it, it's a beautiful space. It's difficult to visit because I would say that it's very long. Uh, sometimes mm. the slavery inside is lost because it's too long. Then you, you have several sequences that you can choose right. to visit. Um, but I would say that it's then that is an impressive museum, and I would say that the fact that their collections are very rich collections from the point of view of slave merchants and the slave owners, right. then it's all the uh, instruments of punishment and so on that they, they have there. Hmm. 